Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show post WWE Draft Edition. The night everything changed, or did it? We'll get right into it. We gotta get right, right into it because he's got one of these guys has got to uh, get out and and start his travels early in the morning on their way to uh, San Diego to talk to our lucha new lucha friends. That guy is in Poughkeepsie, uh, New York. I said it right tonight. That guy is Mad Mike. Yeah, Sorg, my train leaves in about 50 minutes, so I am all packed, but holy crap, I need to talk for a little bit about this draft. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll get you to dump out on that first, uh, but also with us, uh, representing, of course, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, he is Eamon Payton in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, yes, drafts, I tried, I tried to make a draft poll joke, and I can't think of one, because I'm not that creative. Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, the WWE draft is concluded. I have opinions, as I do. <laughs> and also with us from the greater Pittsburgh area is the Riz. I mean, none of you could have came up with good lucha things and then just run off. No, I mean, I mean, no, no, no. Good lucha things. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you, you didn't. See- you didn't see that yet? I have no, no, what? I saw it. I saw it. I, I, Eamon? I, I have not. We, uh, we've, been, we've been doing another podcast for the last hour, so I have no idea yeah, what, what, oh, what okay. you're talking uh, about. You guys, need, you guys need to check out the Kalisto uh, promo. Oh, okay. geez. You're All right. Really this is, as I said, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, <laughs> WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please check us out on all the podcasty outlets, including iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Facebook. Yeah, I know they're more video than, than podcasty. Uh, mm. All kinds of places. If they're not, we're not there, let us know. We'll get there. Uh, and also, uh, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Because of the SmackDown change, we're going to be moving this show to 10 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. Uh, so I'm sorry for those couple of people that watch both awesome casting WrestleMania, Wrestling Mayhem Show, but now you can watch SmackDown. So we're we're hey. good. We're good, right? We're good, right? Um, right. Sure. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, uh, you can also right. drop us a line of what you think about the move or our decisions or our thoughts on, on today, today, tonight's uh, WWE draft picks. Uh, 412-206-WMS0 <laughs> is the hotline. You can leave a voicemail there or that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, please support the show if you would like to over at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. You can support the show there. Give a nickel. Give a penny. Give 10 bucks. Whatever you want to do per episode. And you got a little bit of extra with WMS Gold and and uh, and other things. We've got some stuff in development there as well. Thank you to our friends. There may even be some stuff from Mad Mike at San Diego. Could be. Coming. Could be. Um, check out. Um, uh, oh, hey. Thanks to our friends. Uh, the long timer. The MVP of this. The WrestlingRevolution.com's Antonio Garza out there in El Paso, Texas. Uh, of course, there's Mo Diggity. Woo! Woo! Uh, the Matthew and Jennifer. By the way, uh, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Bo Diggity. I, I don't mean to interrupt the Patreon plugs, but Bo Diggity had the best draft analysis I've ever seen on Twitter. He said, um, "Shane said his draft to auto pick, didn't he?" Yeah, that seems mm-hmm. about right. Uh, Eamon had a good a good assumption of that as well. Uh, but also, thanks to why yeah, he still picked you missed my friggin, uh, Never mind. Keep you missed going. my flow. Yeah. You missed my flow. We have to thank the people because they give us money. Uh, thank you to the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's uh, uh, Foundation for Podcast Betterment, Ed Burke and Alex Cars. Thank you so much for supporting the show. That means so much to us. You don't have to give money. Support it by just telling people about it. Share it. Comment on on the the the, the show on our Facebook in our Facebook group wherever that may be, or just join us live and and, and say hi. Hey guys, what's up? Um, hi. so that's it. WWE draft. It's in the can. What? 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 Mike? What happened? Um. So Sorg, I know we said we were going to move the Mayhem show to ten to accommodate people who want to watch SmackDown. I don't want to you, watch it. 
To those people, I have one simple question. Why? I, I don't want to watch it. I, I will say I, will I say, am not going to be watching SmackDown. No, like, I will say honestly, I would prefer to watch Impact. No, 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 no. I'm not buying. No. I'm not buying. If SmackDown and Impact were going head to head, eight to ten, I would watch Impact over SmackDown. I would flip back for the American Alpha match, and that's it. Here's, no, no, here's my thing. I think. While I do find some of the picks a little weird for SmackDown, I, I, I will say in the televised draft, Raw murderized them. Murderized? Absolutely murder. Yes, that's a word. Absolutely murderized them. I think they did better in the supplemental draft. Did they? Did for the they? most part, some of these ones, look at look at the Raw picks in the supplemental draft. I, I, I was. like You have to remember, we did this draft too. Once you get to that supplemental draft, it's a little dicey. I still think Raw came out on top. I still think I still think SmackDown has better picks in the supplemental than uh, Raw does. So you so you're amped about Eva going to SmackDown? I don't mind. Well, we want the all red everything says, going says, to the blue brand. Says, says, the, says the, the guy. Picked says, oh, yeah, we picked Eva Marie. We no. picked Eva Marie for SmackDown, by the way. I'm SmackDown. aware of that, but WWE should not make the same dumb decisions I do. <laughs> Her hashtag is all red everything. Why would you throw her Maybe on she'll it? dye her hair blue. You don't know. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, like some of the – like you got your Zack Riders who've been doing more. Uh, Kalisto. Uh, uh, I think even like a place like here, like the Usos could do well. Like mm-hmm. I don't, as much as we all want Usos. Honestly, if I, if I may jump in here, just the thought of the American Alphas versus the Usos. That could be cool. That would be awesome. And and that's it. I think they've got a better... Honestly, like, what other dream match could you put together from that SmackDown roster that we haven't seen a 11 bagillion times? Ray versus AJ. Ray? Or, or Orton versus Ray. AJ. Well, I think you also have to... I think you have Wait, to Ray consider... Who? I think Ray who? No, he Ray. meant Ray. Oh, I thought you Ray. said Ray. I'm like... Ray's on a different show. Uh, I think. I think you also have to consider too. Like, like, okay, it, this doesn't look any different. It's just split up, right? But also, you have to consider like, like now we have this box of people that will have more attention every week versus you know Raw and SmackDown have been like very same for right. a while, right? And and it's it's giving you no reason to tune in because they're like, well, I'll probably see the same match on raw and nobody's going to reference it. So it doesn't matter. Right now, now yeah. it will. And, 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 and now, now Bobby FJ towns in, in the oh, purple, everything is mixed. Uh, sorry, sorry. You can bring Bobby in cause I have to head off. Okay. We'll, we'll have Bobby come in and replace you, but he's saying that this is going to be the better wrestling show. Uh, for instance, I think raw, I think has a chance to be more congested. I feel just cause it feels like they're taking so much from everything. You right. Know what I mean, it's but like, I'm thinking to the fact of like Stephanie announced that they're going to do the cruiserweight division on Raw. What what cruiserweights do they have? They got nothing. Like they got Neville and like Sin Cara, and that's it. Mm-hmm. I think we're having some great comments in the chat room. I mean, I think you're missing the 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 opportunities of Mojo Rawley and John Cena, Mojo right. Rawley and Brizango. Say what you will, Riz, because I know <laughs> no. what you're about to say about Mojo Rawley. Mojo has gotten better. We said it on the midweek war on recent episodes of NXT. He has gotten better. No. No. <laughs> either way, either way, I, I think I and I think no. again, I, 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 you know, no, they're not the they're not the blowout stars that Raw got, right? But I think this and, this is a nice batch of talent that has an opportunity to stand out on something like like SmackDown. And it's like it's like the old it's like what the old SmackDown was. It was the it was the NXT type of Raw. It was the Castaways. Yeah, and why not build stuff up? I mean, it's it's weird to have Bo Dallas and and Curtis Axel, although they are probably two of my favorite. Like just them, them interacting with you, with each other. Those two guys together are awesome together. But it's weird that they're on Raw and not SmackDown because I think they would do so much better on SmackDown mm-hmm. than they would on Raw. That's true. I do think, like, I, I'm excited for, like, I look at this card for SmackDown, and I'm like, they could do some really good stuff with Breeze Dango. 
Like, I feel yeah. like Tom, Tyler Breeze could benefit a lot from this. Um, you know, Apollo Crews is on here. Uh, Zack Ryder can do singles and also maybe do tag stuff with Mojo. Hey, can, 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 uh, uh, Ziggler, real um, quick, Eamon, 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 can you, can you tell me where I can find a list? Of the uh, I ex- have a list. extended draft, of like course, where where is course, that? Can you drop in the chat or something? Uh, I'm sure WWE.com has it. I don't know. And but, I um, can't. No, I can't find it. I seriously can't find it on on WWE.com. Did you want me to run through them? Because I have the list. Uh, <laughs> just give me a visual. Okay. Because I'm, so I'm, I'm sure by, by the time people listen to this, they may have like pretty much know the list or by by then. Yeah. No, so we like, got like give give us like the actual copy. Yeah. So yeah. No. Let, let us let's have the well, thing I, to look I, at. I have it. I have it in a notes page on my phone. So. Wow, oh, you've been note taking this the entire like wow. You it's are, just looking off Twitter. Um, but. <laughs> I don't know, he's yeah, so matter of fact about this. It's like what what I what I, I took down all the data. Like it, yeah. listen I. And it was a historic event. Eamon took care of it. Okay? Yes. <laughs> um, I, let's talk about, if, if we want to talk more about some other the people on the job, let's talk about the NXT call-ups. Okay. Let's, 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 what do we think of the NXT call-ups? Obviously, the biggest one was Finn Balor, who was taken fifth. Baylor. <laughs> Finn, Finn Baylor. Balor. It's right yeah, here on my so, card. Yay. Finn Balor. Uh, Finn Balor, who was taken uh, fifth. Uh, the, I believe the next ones taken were American Alpha to SmackDown, mm-hmm. which, yes, Alpha's yeah. gonna, I kind of wish they were on Raw because it seems where like more of the tag stuff is, but even still, um, uh, Nia Jax to Raw, which I'm very happy about. That was about. a shocker. Yes, <laughs> it was very sad when uh, they were announcing this woman from NXT, and then the crowd starts to lose it. Yeah, <laughs> and then, like, it's Nia Jax, <laughs> and they're like, oh. Um, uh, we also had, uh, Alexa Bliss going to SmackDown, uh, which I'm, I'm very excited about, uh, as well as, uh, Mojo Raleigh, as we mentioned before, and, uh, mm-hmm. Carmella going to SmackDown, mm-hmm. uh, not going with Enzo and Cass. Wow. Was that only five? Or was that, six? that was, that, was, that six. was six. That was six picks. Yeah. Which I, I, I assumed that NXT, like each show would get three NXT picks, but I guess you can just do, like, they, you could take, like, six straight NXT picks mm-hmm. or whatever if you wanted to. Um, I, I think, I personally, I think all the call-ups are great and, and well-deserved. Um, I think it just is a case of where it falls in the, like, clearly this is WWE shaping out their roster. This isn't just a kayfabe thing that they're doing. Like, they're actually shaping out these rosters to make them look a certain way. So, like, like, if we're taking, if we were to take this as like this is a serious draft, yeah, it's weird that Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura and Bailey and you know Austin Aries even and guys like that aren't drafted over guys like you know Big Joe right. and Jack, well, and like Jack Swagger and like guys like that. Um, but it's because yeah, they're not going to bring all of them up because then NXT has nothing. Yeah, but with Bailey. She's been there for how long now? Right, right. But uh, she's also, but but they, I, I they hate, need to they need to I keep hate. they need to space these cornerstone characters because NXT is still a brand, and it's going to be ever evolving. Yeah. But they, yeah, you're right. They they you know they they just need to take time with that. And again, and again, the theory that maybe Bailey pops up on on Sunday. Anyways, we'll see what happens with that. And I, I hate to agree with uh, Mark Madden, but. Bailey has a window. It's going to feel weird when she comes up or what in the years that go by when that window closes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I, I just hope that we get a lot of Bailey coming up soon. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope you're right. And I hope I, we see Bailey as the mystery partner and then Bailey can go on and do things, but I don't believe that's going to happen. I want it to happen, but I don't believe it's going to happen. Curious notes from a user in the chat room. Um, Alberta Del Rio and Paige have been publicly outed that they are dating are now on separate brands, which the couple brands. can't be too happy about. Uh, uh, the Wyatt family is also completely split up. What, what That's going to be up? strange. Uh, Bray and Eric Rowan are on SmackDown. Braun Strowman's on Raw. Ooh. And Luke Harper is a free agent. <laughs> yeah, Luke Harper may not be in WWE. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, 
I, I think it's interesting. It depends on what they do with the titles as well. Because mm-hmm. you've got, basically I, a lot of also like with how like the women are, especially the, like the women are pretty evenly dispersed. So, but I wouldn't think like why make another women's title? Yeah, especially you know after I mean? after they just rebranded it. And I, I, yeah, I, I I'm hoping. Although you look at these lineups, it's like yeah, they're probably going to end up with a second tag title, a second women's title. but Or maybe they don't. Maybe just SmackDown just has matches for having matches, right? Mm-hmm. And these girls, like, maybe shuffle and get traded over to Raw whenever they want them to get into the title picture. Yeah. You know, and that and would I- be, wouldn't that be okay? Would it be okay? Would it be so bad if we just didn't have tag or women's titles, but we had a tag in women's division that just had great storylines? I would, I, I, and because actually, I was thinking about this. Why not at the pay per views have a Raw team and a or a Raw side and a SmackDown side fighting for a number one contendership spot for yeah, one of those titles? Good. I could see that. Like, I can absolutely have, see that. You'll have American Alpha go up against uh, uh, who? Like Enzo and club? Cass. Yeah, mm-hmm. Enzo and Cass. And those, the winner of that will get the, the chance to face the tag title, and that that and becomes that, that becomes kind of more of a fight of dominance between the two shows, which which stirs the Steph versus Shane and, and the Foley versus Brian and the SmackDown yes. versus Raw thing continually, um, and and everybody gets bragging rights back and forth about that. I, I think that's, yeah, I, that's perfect. Are we are we are we making the bragging rights show now? Bragging yeah, rights comes back. There you go. <laughs> but but serious, I, I I like that idea of just having competition, and you'll 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 have two either two tag matches, two women's matches, two intercontinental matches or United States matches in a, in the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and uh, I I think that's necessary, especially where the way the rosters are. Like I can't imagine like American Alpha not ever challenging for the tag titles just because they're on SmackDown. Right. You know, they've got they've got Becky, they've got Natalia, they've got even like people like Naomi and stuff like that. Like they should be challenging for the women's title. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I wish they would have done it like in the first draft that they did in two thousand two, where the WWE champion and the women's champion were like free agents in a sense and floated. They tried that like one, like what happened? It lasted for like a couple months. A couple yeah. a, a, a month. A no, month. I think it lasted for a few months, and then and then Brock, Brock Lesnar won it, and then yeah. they were like. We're just going to make their own titles. Yeah, they made a um, weird announcement. Did they make a weird announcement? Like Brock's now exclusive to Raw or something, and they're like, Smackdown. or SmackDown, and then they're like, well, hey, we got the world title because Eric Bischoff. Well, because right. I remember like it was like Triple H had the belt, yeah. and then he lost, it, and he was a free agent who wasn't eligible to be drafted during the draft, mm-hmm. and then when he lost it, both sides had to like petition to like get him to sign with with which with either brand. Yeah, and I think that I don't know. I think that makes it interesting. Um, I, 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 yeah. There's, I, I just don't want them to make more titles because that can make it just a, too convoluted for me. Maybe, maybe we'll just have another women's title, but it'll be blue. It'll be blue, which will completely, it'll be a blue cheesecake. which will be just uber clash <laughs> with all red everything. Eva Maria when she eventually wins that title, she's not. She's never gonna win that title. <laughs> you don't know that. Yeah, no, you know. no, I. I fucking know that <laughs> poor Riz, poor, well, poor Riz. I, if she does I'm not going to watch it because I'm not watching Smackdown I, I, I think I, and I'm curious what, what people are going to think of this and, and, and well, also I think one other thing we should note uh, to as far as like them trying to make Smackdown very interesting uh, John Cena yeah you're on Smackdown there you go. Dude, John guys, Cena's not wrestling at guys, all anymore, guys. John nope. Cena, John Cena and AJ Styles are on SmackDown. You can't tell yeah. me you're not gonna and Dean Ambrose. You you can't tell me you're not gonna watch for those guys, right? Yeah, yeah I think they've got they've got some they've working got department. They've I now that I look at it, they've got people, they've got a couple stars, and then they've got people who they can work up to. And that's like like Riz mentioned, that's what was good about yeah. SmackDown. That you know, Kurt Angle's got to be like the top stars, and like your edges and 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 guys like that got to be top stars, you know. And they wouldn't have gotten that chance on Raw. Raw's upper card looks better than than uh, SmackDown's, but 
but their undercard is a lot more even than we think it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Weird. Weird. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about the WWE draft and SmackDown and where they're going to go from this. And of course, I guess we should probably preview uh, WWE Battleground. But first, hey, go check out um, if you want to check out where some of these guys came from, like guys like Dean Ambrose and and uh, uh, AJ Styles. A lot of that stuff's over at IndieWrestling.us. Our friends, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, and of course, stuff from uh, Joe Dombrowski, Prime Wrestling. A lot of big names, Johnny the Johnny Gargano's uh, you see on and and. And, and all these guys uh, came through indie wrestling and a lot of them came through the Pittsburgh and Cleveland areas. Or you can just see us interview Virgil in his living room at his merch table in the uh, Legend of Virgil on his traveling merchandise table. Uh, so much more. IndieWrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter. You'll get updates on the Wrestling Mayhem show as well as sales and releases happening from IndieWrestling.us our all wrestling everything here at Sorgatron Media. Go check out IndieWrestling.us and, um, and uh, sign up for the newsletter and, uh, and uh, check it out. Oh, and there's the Around the Indies column. That's a wonderful thing Matt Carlin has put together. Keeps you updated on what's upcoming uh, nice multimedia presentation over there uh, uh, for, and I, I think we're gonna. He's got. He's gonna have to depart in a little bit, but we're uh, looking to groom somebody new. <clears throat> gonna have some discussions on that later. Um, let's check it out. IndieWrestling.us. So the draft has happened. Oh, let's look at Battleground this weekend, this Sunday on the WWE Network. What did this do to the show? It made it made one match uh, a little less like interesting, and it's one of the better matches in the card. Oh, you're talking about Owens and Zayn? Yes. Yeah, because like, their big selling like, point was like this could be the last time they wrestle each other. That's exactly it. It was no, they they even said this is going to be the last time we fight. So why not make it this month? Which when, makes which makes me hopeful that they'll maybe do something more for SummerSlam, mm -hmm. but like, still tag. like, you think they'll do a tag at SummerSlam? Just tag, just tag, become the champions. Why not? Do it. Uh, but but it, it just makes it feel weird now. Like 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 it's like going, uh, like getting a new car and finding out later on that it's it's a it's a lemon or something like like that. It just it's busted. No, or I something. don't. I don't think yeah. that bad, but but still. No, no, um, I mean, it, not not really a lemon, but like like it makes a rattling noise, and the and you don't know what it is, but it's still going to be your new brand new car, but it just has that little something in it mm -hmm. that makes it weird. I thought it was interesting. This is, this is looking a little further than Battleground, but but he is going to show up on 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 the pay per view. Uh, Randy Orton to SmackDown, Brock Lesnar to Raw, and they're the big match announced for SummerSlam. Yeah. So I mean, they could do some interpromotional sort of stuff there. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, there could be. I mean, maybe these, uh, I'd be great. Honestly, it'd be great if just Randy Orton just sneaks into Raw and 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 tries to RKO him or something like that. Yeah. Um that could be fun. Oh, but I'm curious what his schedule is going to be. Uh, Brock's schedule is going to be here going into SummerSlam too, considering everything going on with him. Uh, yeah. Or if he even shows up there through the doping. Uh, allegations <laughs> in the long run too. I, I really love that WWE or excuse me that Raw drafted two people in a row with uh, wellness stuff. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Roman. 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 I see you looking at me. No, you're not allowed in the studio yet. Um, one more week, Roman. One more week, Roman. Go go outside and attract Pokemon. Um, Pokemon. So what is the react? We're talking about Battleground. What is the reaction going to be for Roman? I don't know. Like nuclear. I nuclear nuclear go away. I, I yeah, feel like I, 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 I've been saying this for the past month since this news came out. Roman is fucked. Did you hear the reaction to him being drafted tonight? And they were in like worse. They were in Worcester. Like they weren't in some like you know big like you know they weren't in like Philly or anything. But that reaction was intense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm, I feel bad for him. I, 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 I heard that. I, I heard that. Why, it, why? Hold on. I heard that and they were booing. And I realized, like, they're going to boo no matter what show he's on, right? Like, like it's just his name enacted that, mm -hmm. not the action. 
Riz? But why why feel bad about that though? He because brought I, he brought this all on himself. Yes, but well, and I, I, and I I've been the biggest supporter of Brock of uh, Roman Reigns for for the year now, but he brought this whatever drug he was on on himself. Mm-hmm. So he has to eat the soap and take his punishment like a man. Eat the, soap. eat the soap. Show title. Yeah, like the old time, you know. Yeah. Wash him out. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're getting at. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm very interested. I don't know what's going to happen. He's going to get booed out of the fucking building. I, I think so. I, 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 I And I don't blame Roman for the position he's been put in. Until this, I, I blame Roman for uh, potentially putting the final nail on his coffin. Yeah, I don't. You just gave that crowd that hates you a lot of material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it's it's if they don't lean into it at this point, I I can't imagine what they could do with something like this. Um, if they if they don't turn him heel, but they already kind of were, weren't they? They're idiots if they don't. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I think it's very curious. Um, although I feel like they've kind of deflated a lot of that match having having Seth and Dean do this like two times in a row. You know? Um, yeah. I, I, I know they're really trying to amp up these these last two shows uh, leading into the live SmackDown. And I hope they did well for it. But um, I don't know. We'll see. It's, 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 it's kind of a curious position they put themselves in. Um, from there, uh, of course, I mean, we're going to have one, one, two women's matches. This is, um, I look at this show, and I'm not saying this is a bad pay-per-view. I actually think I'm going to enjoy this pay-per-view very much. It looks good, yeah. It looks good. But I want to point out, like, you know, this also feels like a betweener pay-per-view. To me, I think you. I think you need to to kind of uh, uh, slot this in a in a Saturday night's main event kind of spot that's going to set up other things more than what we're seeing here. Um, but you see things like six man ta- six man tags of New Day and the and the and the Wyatt family. Although there's implications that there now because of uh, how the draft went. Uh, Cena Cena and Enzo and Cass against the club. Uh, you know, uh, we'll see what that turns into. I mean, a lot of stuff they're just going to kind of lean into SummerSlam. We have two women's matches, none for the title. True, but I do like how the stories have been built for guys. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I keep particularly. I, I um, apologize. Becky and Natalia. By, by the way, I'm going to apologize right now to the video people because I keep showing this like corner of a window because Mad Mike went away and I keep forgetting that button doesn't work. So there's Eamon. <laughs> there's Eamon's face. Sorry about that. Hi, there's um, Eamon. But no, uh, and and we kind of alluded to it during the draft discussion. But like, I my prediction is that Bailey could be Sasha's mystery partner, and that will be a way to call her up. Um, you know, I I think there's ways you can go about it. Um, it's got to be because like, who else would you pick as like, you know, a it, mystery partner? And also another thing that I think I figured out here: so Intercontinental and U.S. titles are being defended. Am I wrong? Both, 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 both matches have people from each roster. Both matches have people from each roster. So that could be interesting. Could we... Okay, do you see um, everything staying put or a double switch? I think everything stays put. I think there could I, be one switch. I, yeah, I think there's going to be one. You think one's going to switch and <clears throat> somebody's going to have two titles? I think we're going to make Darren Young great again. Yes. Oh, by the way... Bob Darren Backlund Young. is the best thing that's going on raw. He got a chance tonight. Darren Young, Darren Young, um, uh, the SmackDown. I think was it was it him, the SmackDown. He was on the Miz Miz show. Um, Darren Young is great. Like Dar- Darren Young okay. is intense. The cr- Darren Young is doing great tonight. Tonight the crowd popped so huge when he put Miz in the chicken wing. Yes, like it was ridiculous. Um, he is fucking over instantaneously. And I love it. I think they've got to give it to him. Um, yeah, it's interesting that I think we'll get a lot on the pay per view of like Shane and Stephanie being like, "Okay, now win it for Raw." You know what I mean? Since they're both, you know, mm-hmm. it really kind I'm of sure leads into the, lead well. the battleground a bit. I, I, I like that. I like that. It, it, it adds a new layer to this, to the onion that is battleground. Well, and I, I think I think they're going to try to do more with, and I hate to say it because I don't mm-hmm. like them. The hype bros mm-hmm. with, with Zack Ryder and is Zack Ryder facing for the? He's facing Rusev. Yeah, yeah he's facing Rusev. Yeah, I, I 
keep on forgetting. But but just having I think they're trying to build up the hype bros for something. Also like maybe be, or go ahead. No, I was gonna say maybe for like a feud with Eva Marie or something. I don't know. <laughs> feud with Eva Marie. Um uh, if a, if Miz loses the belt to pay per view, that's a real fuck you to SmackDown on this. Because especially when Daniel Bryan was like, "I don't really want to draft him, but he's got the title." So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. As curious, uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see how Battleground shapes up in these first two um, live roster split shows. And of course, the first of them, Monday Night Raw, is here in Pittsburgh. Got my tickets yes. last night. We'll be there. Um, uh, Mayhem representing, uh, and whoever else pops up. Is that what the fuck? Sorry, something started moving, and I don't know what the fuck it was. I hope, I hope <laughs> Sword, do you have ghosts? Is there a cat? Are you down here, cat? What the fuck was that? Okay, well, it's getting weird wow. here in the studio. So Sword is getting drunk. Yeah, no, like I felt something on my leg, and it's really freaky. I hope it was a cat. I'm. I'm <laughs> Hope it was the cat. Uh, we're going to take a break so I can investigate what's under my desk right now. Uh, so uh, we'll be back with the big question after this. This is Johnny Gargano, the bees knees, the cat's pajamas, and the hold your bang. Not Johnny Bananas, by the way, even though I like him. You're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're back, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey, big shout out to our friend Slice on Broadway supporting the show. Uh, feeding the guests that have been in the studio here throughout the evening. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm freaking out. There's the bug's still flying around. That's why I felt. That's why I figured out it's it's around here and it's huge. And I'm working on that. But it's, our friend Slice on Broadway. Funny. Hopefully, it doesn't like pizza, but I'm sure it will. Uh, they've been supporting us for a good while here on the network. Check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, and here in Beachview in Pittsburgh, uh, PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. If you're down there for a game in town, checking them out. Or down in They Cur- won, so get a c- they celebra- won, cel- yes. celebratory pizza. Celebratory slice. And, of course, in Carnegie, PA, on Main Street. Slice on Broadway.com, PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. Let them know the mayhem sent you. So, uh, Riz... It's time yes. for the big question, and you have some some something for us. Now, now, something special, I understand, right? I have something very special because I have watched uh, Todd McShay and uh, Mel Kuyper Jr. do this for years on the NFL Network and ESPN. Uh, so the draft is over, and so that means it's time for some analysis. So I want... The, fir- the first question I have for you guys is, out of everybody left, which one was the biggest snub of the night? Like, who did not get picked that you want to get picked? Well, uh, uh, the, the probably the saddest one, though, is I agree, Heath Slater. <laughs> Heath what? Slater had a rough week. Yeah, well, and even in the in the in the pre-show, like Corey Graves had, was asked, like, if you could take one of the social outcasts, what would you take? He said, I would take Heath Slater. Wow. And like, like he's not big. <laughs> um, uh, although, yeah. but I like what they could do with that. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it'll be in in that case. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll say I'll go with Heath. I'll say Heath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorg. I, I don't want to go with the Luke because we we did talk about Luke. We did talk about um, some of the weird non-picks out of NXT, for instance. Uh, but mm-hmm. looking at NXT, and I think you need to automatically disqualify champions, okay, um, right. for for bringing them up, just because of the the position there. So so because I I could <coughs> say Asuka, I could say Joe. Oscar. Um, what I thought As- Asuka. Oscar. 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 Damn it! Do oh, I yes. need to write this down too? D- damn it! <laughs> the sword, you're fine. I don't this... even know. I don't even know how to <laughs> write that. Then I'll no, remember sorry. it. Okay. Um, but I, I think certainly, especially considering who did go up, which we well, had Eva Maria Nia Jax go up, right? And no Not Bailey, it. and no Bailey. So I'm saying on ladies, on ladies, and Carmella, yeah. and Carmella. You're like. Like again, I know we've talked about the theory of what might happen in the pay per view and everything like that. But on paper, you're right. Bailey, biggest snub of the night. The yeah. biggest deserving yeah, to I go agree. up, over deserving to go up. 
should have been um should have had the the welcome mat rolled out for her tonight on smackdown i think to make a big splash but maybe there's a bigger splash coming for her who knows but i think as far as the draft goes bailey is my answer you know i would i think you could have now that i think about it, like you could have announced bailey tonight yeah and then still have her be the mystery part of the tape yeah you know what i mean because assumingly we're not supposed to see her wrestle until next smackdown you know what i mean um yeah I, I i i will say the women they called up from nxt i think are all great and I think are deserving of that spot because they have improved and are ready to be on that level. But Bailey's been ready, and she's probably one of the top. Like, she's up there with Sasha Banks as far as not just talent, but like the ability to sell and and market themselves and and you know be their own kind of brand, so to speak. Like, I, I think it's kind of dumb to kind of pass on Bailey. And and for me, uh, one of the ones that we mentioned early on, uh, where's Luke Harper in all this? Well, Luke Harper may be... What? Maybe Dunzo. Did you see that tweet he posted? No. I'll pull it. I'll pull it on. Uh, he so posted... Can I take another guy or what? Cause... You can. Okay. You can. Um, <clears throat> um, but... Then, anyways, I, I'd probably then go with somebody who would probably be good at maybe at a SmackDown for right now. And that's a double Austin Aries. Yeah. I mean, it, just having that, just having him on TV again would be nice. Oh, you know, uh, now that I think about it, since Heath was kind of the obvious one, you know who I would have said was a big snub? Um, hmm. Ty Dillinger. Ooh, I think because he, he was like, one of the yeah. ones that was like rumored to be called up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think he deserves it because, like I said, he he's worked hard. He's you know worked hard for a long time. He's been in wrestling and WWE for a long time. He was Stan. He was Stan. He was he was some he was someone in East, in the in the new ECW like in two thousand eight, like and like he's gotten himself over now. Like mm-hmm. he's he's really gotten himself over. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, he seems like kind of a snub. Uh, by the way, the Luke Harper tweet uh, was, uh, he tweeted tonight, thank you, see you soon, goodbye forever, uh, numeral 93 dot dot. Hmm. 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 Well, okay. look for Luke Harper as uh, Brody Lee very soon in AIW and Chikara. Uh Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say if if the WWE dropped the ball on Luke Harper, that is the biggest fucking snub yes. of all time. Yeah, because you are dumb. <laughs> so next question. Since we got the snub, Sorg, I'm gonna start with you. Who is this draft's sleeper pick? Like sleeper who, pick. Who in maybe not in a couple, maybe not this month, maybe in a couple months. Do you see this being a good draft pick for? Like, who who benefits more from this draft pick happening? Who? So, like, who's going to rise above? You think? Like, who's going to who's yes. going to really kind of stick out in, in, in this thing? Um, like, besides the big names, the, besides the big uh, names, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you know, there were some really interesting things being said by Dolph Ziggler tonight. Um, after being drafted to SmackDown, he did get drafted kind of kind of high up there. Um, so I and and again in a, in a brand split before is where he did become uh, the first time a, a world a world heavyweight champion, mm-hmm. and actually the second time too under the brand splits or the two titles. I think they, or the, it was they, when they were doing like the super show. Thing. They're doing the super like, shows like him and Delvin. Technically, there was two brands, but everyone. Else so this could be an opportunity um, to, for him to get another shot. To do, do something pretty great, uh, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens with that. So, I I, okay. I think I think I think he's talented mm-hmm. enough to do it. But in in every opportunity he has, he goes. You can't deny every opportunity he has. He goes like a, a million bucks. But yes. it's what they're doing to him that's like eh, okay, that makes it feel flat um, yeah. more than his performance of the thing. You know what I mean? I I, I, I think sometimes you just can only um, do so well 
in in the position you're given. So, but but like, like you were saying, he was doing those matches against Baron Corbin how many nights in a row? Right. And he and right. so that, it, that, it's going to be that interesting kills, to see that what kills he can both do. guys. That kills both guys, mm-hmm. guys. Remember when we were having Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston like every week on SmackDown? Yeah, like, it was like, oh, we got best of '97 series. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Well, why do you think that's okay? You know, how is that? Because they do flippy things is and it a rib? can sell like a monster. Is it a rib against those guys and the fans? What, what's what's going on with that? And I'm hoping we don't fall into that. If we start seeing that on SmackDown and Raw, then get ready to check out, guys. And, and I, I be think we will see it on SmackDown. I think we have a chance of seeing it on Raw just because it's three hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? By the way, I put out the first question um, about the you know who got snubbed. And we have uh, uh, two guys, uh, our friends uh, Sheep the Moon and Brendan Castioli, uh, both saying Bailey. Uh, she should be owning the women's mm-hmm. division in, in, in WWE. And again, Bailey, but she's coming to Battleground. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so that's uh, again resounding on that one. We'll, we'll put your other big question out there. Just like who the dark horse of yes. this, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Amen. Amen. Uh, mine's also going to be from SmackDown. Uh, mine's Baron Corbin. Oh wow. wow! I think Baron Baron showed on NXT that he can be good. He can do really good stuff when given direction and given a story. And with a lighter roster, with you know more time to develop stuff like this, I think he can blossom on some place like SmackDown. Okay. Okay. And for me, uh, I'm. I'm in between two, but I'm gonna go with. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Darren Young. Mm-hmm. Just, just Darren Young. Like I, I've, I've loved everything he's been doing, and I think the short, the shorter roster will help him bloom out even more. Uh, and it doesn't help. I mean, it doesn't hurt that he's with. Uh, Bob Backlund right now, which is amazing. Uh, the, the the quote that Bob Backlund has been saying to him the entire time during his uh, interview was just brilliant. Uh, let me see if I can find it up, find it for you guys, for the ones who don't that don't know what he said. Uh, let's see. That has been great. Uh, I think it's a good mix uh, while you're while you're looking oh, yeah, for yeah. that. It, it was the constant tendency to relapse into barbarianism. <laughs> what? He just kept repeating that over and over again, pointing at him with his shoulder up in the air like that, pointing at him. And it was just, I want more of this. And by the way, he and Titus O'Neil were like buddies for some reasons again. Uh, good, good. Yeah, I, they can do so much with with uh with Darren Young and I I I kind of want to see a tag team with uh with Jack Swagger too. I don't know why. But just I just want a Jack Swagger Darren Young tag team with Bob Backlund as their manager as their Zeb Coulter. It could be fun. I can see it. I, yeah, that could, that could be a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> That's so weird. Mm-hmm. So like Bob Backlund could be the Paul Ellering of of these guys. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so next question, simple question, because uh, I don't really want to give give too much, you know, to the time here. But uh, what would your grade be for SmackDown? The show or going forward? The draft. The the roster. The roster. I'll give. The, I'll give. I was gonna say, based on the draft, I'll give SmackDown a B minus because I do think they were kind of lackluster in the opening round, but I do think they made up for it in the second round. What would you do different? Um, go after some other. Uh, Not Eva yeah. Marie. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't have a problem with Eva Marie. I would say go after some stronger people in the opening round. Like, uh, I think. As much as I like her, I think Becky Lynch was taken a little too early. I think Miz was taken definitely too early. Um, you know, there were still some great people on the board before, like your 
you know, like Del Rio, I think was kind of a wasted pick. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sword. I give um, I give him an A minus when, and I'm factoring in, I, I and I'm grading on a curve, okay, because you can't expect that that uh, especially with the stacked like like picking system. I didn't expect like a Brock Lesnar to drop over there. I didn't expect you know a, a, a lot of you know. I'm surprised, and AJ Styles and John Cena being on that show does bump it up a whole bunch, mm-hmm. a whole bunch. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I think it's a good mix of people, and I think there's a lot of opportunity there. So I'm going to go an A minus. Okay, and for me. I'm going to do a uh, Daniel Bryan and say B plus. Uh, just go rain between both of you guys. Uh, I, I agree that the star, it, the star power, it, it seems like early days of NXT. These unknown, it, these unknowns going to be are going to be with some of the knowns in WWE because you had. I mean, you didn't have stars like John Cena come up there or come down there. You had, you know, Titus O'Neil and all that stuff, all those guys. But you, now you have John Cena that can help help tutor some other some of the younger generation stars that need some help, yeah. like a uh, like a Breeze Dango or man, I love saying that name, or or just just, just having those guys to get together and having AJ st- AJ there doing the same thing is making that a lot better. And I can't wait. I, I want to see what God. happens. I'm not going to, I mean, I, and I know I said, I'm not going to watch it, but I'm probably, I'll probably watch it and I'll probably, you know, like it. You want uh, dream matches, man. It yeah. all depends. It all depends on how they write the show Yeah. as well. Yeah. You want dream matches? Just AJ Styles and pick people on the roster. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like, yeah. We, oh, we were, what? we were talking we, about that earlier. Yeah. If they take this in a in a sort of shoot route and have Stephanie and Shane actually kind of booking the shows and being kind of maybe the head of the writing staff or whatever for those shows, I would be very interested. I'd it, be it, very interested in SmackDown. I think Shane can do a, has a lot enough ideas and can do a lot in, in, in complete shoot with that roster. My worry mm-hmm. is the way, so raw has been very sanitized. SmackDown has been very, our, our main products on TV are very sanitized, right? Yeah. Um, it is what it is. There's a formula, blah, 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 blah. We just put in some new faces and plug in them in the formula. Right. And that's that's been kind of the problem for for a lot of us. We're like, oh, this is the same thing. What, what, what? You know, there's glimmers of hope in there, but really, as much as we have been really, really kind of enjoying, I think as, as a whole, what they've been doing, um, it's been like it's not as exciting as it could be. It needs to. I'm worried that we're just going to have two two shows with different faces, still kind of doing the same thing, right? Yeah. And and I want it to be. SmackDown's hot doing here over here under under Paul Heyman. This guy, you know, this is doing the good over here under this person. And it's a very I want it to feel as different as it used to be. You know, and I want it to say, "Man, Raw really like like we're going to have a beginning of week war." Okay, who yes. won Raw or SmackDown? And maybe that's a question that we're going to ask here on Tuesday nights. Okay, who's your winner? Who who won the WWE war? Yeah. Raw, SmackDown or NXT and CWC last week? <laughs> You know, <laughs> I mean, really, there is there, there and and um, you know, showing five, six, seven hours of the same stuff every week doesn't work, or has been not working as well as it used to. So you gotta mix it up, and and um, yeah. and I think you know, people saying, "Well, I'm not watching SmackDown." Good, okay, keep watching Raw. <laughs> or some people saying, "Well, I gotta go see John Cena over here," or "I gotta go see AJ Styles over here." Good. Yeah. Keep watching SmackDown. You you have something to do on Monday nights. Go watch Gotham when it comes back. Whatever. Don't spoil me. Um. So so no, I think that's that's you know, we don't expect you to watch all the things. 
they don't expect you to watch all the things. They just hope you watch as much of it as you possibly can. And last question. Last question. How about Raw? The Raw roster as it is right now. A. I'll give Raw. A. I'll give Raw an A minus. A. A minus. Full on A. Yeah, I was gonna. Go, I'm going all A too. I, I mean, mean it, just and it, it's it's to the point where Sorg. I was listening to you and I was going with Raw roster right now. This, you won't get any of that now. Raw is going is going to look a lot different next week. Mm-hmm. Raw is going to be strange because it's a strange land. I, I'll see you. I'll see you in section two hundred six of the strange new land, Riz. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be there because I work until like seven thirty in the evening. And I'm, Damn you, Riz! Uh, but uh, just the, just the fact that you have to change that. The dark match, paper, the dark, dark match now, is going to be is going to be amazing because you're probably going to get Finn Balor. You're, you're you are going to get Finn Balor. Wait, 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 what is the dark match? What is the dark match for those that haven't seen? I was looking uh, at that actually earlier today. It was John Cena, <laughs> Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns mm-hmm. versus Chris Jericho. Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. Mm-hmm. Holy crap! I remember that off the top of my wow. head. Wow. By the way, by the way, these dark matches sometimes won't happen, or or not happen anywhere near advertised. So, mm-hmm. and this is the match Cards that just... they do after Raw, so they make sure everybody goes home happy. You know, um, yeah. Well, they're already gone by then. What? They're, they're, they are already gone. Like half the people there are gone. Right, right, right. But still, for those to say, it's still a general like, let them go home happy. Da, 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 the ones that want to, you know. Um, but if if next week on Raw, we are sitting here going, that Raw was the same Raw that we've seen in year in in the past few years. We have a problem. Yes, because it's not. Mm-hmm. It's going to look a lot different, and it's going to look a lot a, a lot better, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Hopefully because we see you the, won't have the hope, same matches over and hope, over again. Hopefully we see the Cruiserweight belt debut next week. Hopefully. And then Hornswoggle can come and win it again. Yeah, when they're not suing him for using his own picture. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. But yeah, that, that was a good analysis, guys. That was good. Yeah, we up. broke it all down just to build it back up again. I am the Riz Kuyper Jr. Here. So, guys, we'll see you in about five years when the SmackDown Raw NXT Super Show comes to your town. Uh, <laughs> when we bring it all back together again. Does anybody remember? Oh, no, we'll I, 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 I have a big question five. Do you remember why we were clamoring for them to rejoin the roster together? Does anybody recall? Like what I remember, like we we have to go back and listen to an old wrestling mayhem show around when that happened. But yeah. what was our gripe? Because I, I, I know, I know, I know. Okay, it's probably because after a while they stopped doing that. They stopped doing Raws and Smackdowns separate and just said, "Hey, we're just gonna mix them up a little bit. Maybe maybe trade." some superstars for one night and make them make SmackDown watchable again. And then maybe we can do something for raw. And then maybe we do a super show, which will have both raw and SmackDown. And mm-hmm. then why don't we just, why don't we just, but was it, but was it, I feel together? like, I feel like, like, like we had tag t- titles and we had the women's titles and it just felt like none of it mattered. Because there yeah, was like too many belts, and, and it got to that point where WWE was getting more saturated and and kind of, kind of how you mentioned, kind of clean mm-hmm. in a sense, not not in like like language or anything, but like with their presentation. So nothing was different about the two shows. Yeah. So everything was just kind of like bland. Hmm. And, and I hope, and, and, and especially like you draft people so often that like like I, I like the earlier draft because it was like. Even at the early stages, you're like, these guys represent those brands. Like, 
to me, Kurt Angle for the longest time was intrinsically SmackDown. Yeah. Like he was a SmackDown wrestler. He was not a Raw. Like when he's on Raw, it's weird. Like. Yeah. 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 Because they, they built those up in, under those brands for so long. It's like it, it, it's like pulling hell like AJ Styles. You're just like, wow, this guy is like Mr. TNA. And here he is on Raw with John Cena. Right. Like yeah. still like that's how you identify him until you don't anymore. Um, same with Hulk Hogan and WCW for the longest time, right? For those that were around for that. Uh, it's like, this feels awesome yet wrong at the same time. What's happening here? You know? Yeah, that kind of stuff. All right, guys. Well, we did ask here towards the end of SmackDown what we usually ask during the day uh, on Tuesdays on podcast day. Um, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, before I forget, in the chat room, Wheels is saying B plus SmackDown B Raw. So had that e. out there. And we're still getting responses saying Bailey got snubbed uh, coming yeah. up on Twitter since we asked that. Um, oh, and actually, sorry, before we get to that, I want to check in. Uh, we do have another probably 23 hours or something for our Twitter poll we put, our, uh, put out earlier tonight. Um, let me pull up those answers right now. I'm trying to use this Twitter machine a bit more. I said, well, whose show is looking better? I autocorrected and missed the whose show. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, with uh, 67 votes already in, actually, is the final results. Uh, Raw, 64% over SmackDown, 36%. So, And that's mm -hmm. just the flat, what do you think is better? So there you go. Just from the rosters that were picked as of uh, two hours. Well, I guess the end of SmackDown when we put that out there. So, so guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Hey, I'll let you go first. Oh, I learned from wrestling this week that uh, Enzo Amore is quite the... Uh, the eloquent speaker. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I don't know if anyone saw the Cruiserweight Classic video uh, promo we did. But, oh, no, no, I didn't. Oh boy! Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> he talked about apartheid at one point. And what? It was a lot of. Yeah. Did you not watch it? No, I didn't. Oh, you should watch it. Um, he puts on. I, I claim that what I refer to it as, he puts on his white guy voice, which I didn't know was a thing he could do, and it's very strange to listen to, but um, it's it's very fun. It's very, very fun. You should watch it immediately. Oh, wow. We're still getting grades from the big questions, too, Riz, on Twitter. Sorry. Uh, Riz, what did, what did you learn this week? I learned that... Jerry Lawler not knowing the actual names and getting angry at Mauro Ranallo for telling him what the name of a dive is hmm. makes me cringe that he's still employed. T tonight was a night of like, oh man, I haven't listened to Jerry Lawler commentary in a while. Oh, I've listened to I've, Jerry Lawler yeah. commentary. <laughs> like, like every time he says something, it's it's like it's like Dad, shut up. <laughs> a little bit. No. A little bit. Like, like, I love that Sami Zayn's big drafting was just of Jerry Lawler being like, well, that was a dumb pick. Yeah. Yeah, after yeah. he got choke slammed. But really, like, oh, is that much different than slammed. is that much different than JBL in the long run? I want to know what happens to Byron Saxton, to be quite honest. I don't think NXT. that was clear. I don't think that was clear. I don't think that was clear. All right. Uh from Twitter, uh, what did people learn? Uh Ashley New Age Amazon. Uh learned uh that i really want to play putt putt with the ascension yeah and so is matt carlin's i'm sure uh those guys suck on twitter it says that a thin slice of fabric is not really a huge distance from testicles and then i asked i asked what are you talking about and he says have you ever been pile driven worse yet inverted driver no but i do remember our good friend jason gory uh, getting an in in the tights pow driver by um, what is his name Dino something? Oh, probably Dan Shoku Dino. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. That was a curious. He's because he's the one that does the yeah. Yeah. The in hey, sword. Yes. Oh, did you finish the Twitter one yet? That Facebook? is all the Twitter ones, but I have more from Facebook. Okay, go ahead. All right, from Facebook, what did people learn? Uh, Jennifer on there says Team Raw. I guess that's a learning moment. I don't think that's what you learned. Yeah, Bobby of J-Town learned that Brizango is the best tag team for the second week in a row, but now they have competition in American Alpha. That feud's going to be awesome. Uh, Dan, Dan Hooven, Big Show is alive and is drafted before Cesaro. Oh, no, <laughs> because he's American, of course. Um, Alex Carr is out there in California. Great shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. And check out his shirts on 
whatamaneuver.com, I believe it is. Um, mm-hmm. Alex Gray says he learned that Raw did the WWE Universe dirty with their picks and other announcements. All right. Uh, Trey Garcia. I'm in Iceland. You guys need to keep me updated. Be back in two weeks. I, that's not what we... Okay. Uh, Jeff... No. Jeff in here says TNA sucks, but at least it doesn't have any McMahons, and I have three hours of free time on Mondays now. So I guess he was saying you're not yes. watching Raw. Good job. He's not watching Raw. So see, see, people are picking teams. What did I learn from wrestling this week? I'm trying to remember what I did this weekend. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 so. I, I I I was reminded how much I love wrestler weddings. We uh, I I shot a wedding. Listen, I I don't shoot weddings very often. They're typically family, friends, or um, pro wrestlers. So um, this was the third I was at, second I filmed, and um, I I just learned that um, I miss Chuck Roberts as an announcer. Because uh, this, sec- this is the second time I've seen him doing uh, wedding introductions, and uh, I forgot how awesome he is. And and Riz, you may remember back in the day, uh, it, it, like I'm sitting there and I'm filming him doing these introductions, and I'm like, I remember the Chuck is my homeboy T-shirts, yes, that were going around. And uh, this is when we, of I course, never were, got one of those. You know, and I didn't either. Like I think I think Spiker was making those or something. Um, so Sp- Spiker, if you're listening, which I think he does, give me that T-shirt. <laughs> Make another one and give me that T-shirt. Or just start wearing to the. Sorry, plumber. Chuck is my homeboy. <laughs> or, or sorry, the, the new. And of course, those who don't know, we're talking about the International movie. Wrestling Cartel, our our local one. And of course, mm-hmm. I do filming for them. Oh, as hey, well. by the way, uh, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Ric Flair got engaged for the fifth time today. Yeah, you know what was movie. really weird? I looked at that picture and thought it was Britt Baker. <laughs> That's oh. not a good sign. It does. It really does. It, it, like, I, like at first glance, I'm like, uh, uh, Ric Flair gets married, Brick Baker. I'm like, oh, um, my, I, and I don't, I don't know if I talked about this on the show, but when Ric Flair was here last time for IWC, he was making eyes at Brick Baker, and and made a <laughs> maybe made it a, is Baker, made yeah. a comment about her like uh, uh, from the ring, and she was like over by us, over by over by the uh, the the tech table and everything, and blushing it up, but yeah. I don't know. I can't wait till we, I can't wait till we have Britt back on the uh, Indie Mayhem. Our first question: So how's it like being married to Ric Flair? <laughs> <laughs> what, does Rick sp- what does Rick smell like? What oh, Rick duh. Smell? We could probably could oh, ask that, but I don't think you want to know the answer. So, old uh, people in Bengay. Yeah, yeah, uh, and alimony. <laughs> so. Guys, thank you so much. Great talking and wrestling with you. Uh, thank you, guys. Please uh, uh, kick with us here our new time, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Somebody remind me to fix it on the website. It still had like two times ago. I forgot to update. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. will be on directly after uh, WWE SmackDown Live, <sighs> which means it's going to be part of the SmackDown logo for like, like six months. Um, but anyways... Thank you so much. Of course, Riz, the E Riz. Riz plays games on the YouTube. And of course, the Boss Battle Podcast. Look for it. Look for the Boss Battle Podcast on iTunes. Yes. Yes. And also uh, the voice of Inspire. Damn it. The voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Eamon Peyton at Eamon 2 please on the Twitter. Yes, indeed. InspireProWrestling.com. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm at Sorgatron, uh, SorgatronMedia.com for all the things we're doing, wrestling and otherwise, but most of the wrestling is over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Breaking hot off the presses, there is an article about the Vampiro, or in some countries, Vampiro, uh, interview uh, that you guys did impromptu on the Midweek War <laughs> last week. Uh, some some details that were revealed during that, but check out the Midweek War. Krista Joseph co-executive producer of the Lucha Underground show, also joined you guys on not only the Lucha Underground recap, but the NXT and Impact Wrestling recap. Um, find out what he thinks about Vanguard 1. Also find out what he thinks about um, Finn, Balor, Finn Balor's entrance. Uh, I thought that was kind of curious, too. Considering I know uh, what Vampiro thinks about Matt Hardy. Spoiler alert, he doesn't know who that is. <laughs> No way. Okay. All righty. Um, 
Hmm. Uh, so thank you so much. Check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And as usual, drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0. Good times. Good times. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Oh, no, something came up. Uh, we'll talk about that after the show and so many other things. Uh, check it out, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you so much. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.